Um, Cast of London is a city in which um, exorcists are much in demand because the dead have started to rise in other interesting numbers and in a variety of very antisocial forms. Um, probably Castor tells us exorcism was always there as part of the human genome, it was an innate skill, you know, like something like that, like pitch. Some people have the ability to dispel the dead, um, but until there were ghosts to dispel, it didn't really sort of show itself. Now, um, there are lots and lots of people who can do it, some of them like Casper and Lenny added. What I'd like to do is read two short sequences. Um, they're both exorcisms performed by two different characters. We toasted Cheryl in beer and vodka. Ching ching, drink. She wiped her mouth on the back of her hand and belched unapologetically. So is this your first go explained? Shifting the topic from the loaded issue of how far I was along with the job. Tyler and Rich nodded, but Cheryl, taking another swig of their drink, made a negative wave of her hand. No, ah, no, no, she said, when she downed her mouthful. Don't mind, I've had two already. And one was a book I went out with. You, you went out with a... Tyler echoed, bewildered. When he was still alive, I mean. <laughs> I was haunted by the ghost of my ex-boyfriend. Is that sick or what? Danny Payton is there. He was lovely. His hair was all goldy blonde and he worked out so he had muscles on him. She gestured vividly. But he was bisexual, which he didn't ever tell me, and he was too tiny me with blood. And this bloke had another bloke who beat Danny up and threw him in the Thames. Except he didn't, because he missed. I mean, he threw Danny off Waterloo Bridge, but it was right up close to the edge and Danny landed on the bank in about two inches of water. Broke his neck. Cheryl was getting into her story and she clearly enjoyed our silent attention. Anyway, I went to the funeral and I had a good cry. But mostly I was thinking, you dirty bugger, you should have kept it in your trousers when you weren't with me. <laughs> goes around, comes around. <coughs> Cheryl, that's sick, Tyler protested, wincing. You, you can't go to a funeral and be thinking stuff like that. <laughs> Why not? Cheryl asked, appealing to the rest of us with her arms outspread. You can't make your thoughts work like John. It's just the way I am, okay? I was missing him, yeah. I was sorry he was dead, but he was dead because he was shagging someone else. <laughs> so I couldn't help feeling a bit pissed off about it. That's part of what funerals are for, in my opinion. You get a daddy assistant, you get closure, yeah? Except it turned out that Danny didn't. She paused dramatically, rolling her eyes at us. I got back home, and he was only there in my bloody bedroom, wasn't he? Not a stitch on him. I screamed the place down, and my mum and my stepdad came running in, and then they hit the roof. Mum was wet wetting herself because it was a ghost, and Paulus, my stepdad, was all crazy high because it was the ghost of a white boy. He was calling me all the sluts and all the whores, and Danny was reaching out to me like he wanted to give me a big hug. So Paulus tried to hit him, and his hand went right through, and he smashed the window instead. <laughs> Cheryl laughed at the memory, and I laughed along with her. It was a dark, you know, scene. But she made it funny because her voice orchestrated it like a white wolf farce. Tyler was looking like a hanging judge there, and even Rich was shaking his head in pain awe. You always do this, he said. You tell these awful stories and then you laugh. And there's never a punchline. <laughs> there is a punchline. I exorcised him. You are, Rich explained. And Cheryl cast a sly that side glance at me. There isn't a closed shop or something, is there, she asked, you know, like for actors or, or train drivers. Yeah, sorry, I said, there is, the union is going to have your arse. <laughs> well, it is my best feature, she smirked. <laughs> See, I, I didn't mind him being there at first. You've got no right saying you don't like something if you haven't tried it. But Jesus wept, Cheryl, which protested. A ghost? The ghost is someone I really liked. It was nice having him around. I used to chat with him about stuff. He never said anything back, but I knew he was listening. He was like a mate you could share secrets with. But you know, time goes on, sort of thing. I couldn't really take another boy up to my room if the ghost of the last one was still sitting there. <laughs> and, and he was so sad, like the ghost in the archive is sad. In the end, I thought it was probably best if we ended it. So what I did, right, was I gave him the standard dump speech. Like as if he was still alive. I sat down on the bed next to him and I said, 
I still want to be friends and everything, but I didn't love him in that way. And I wasn't going to go out with him anymore. <laughs> you know how I go, so at least I assume you do. And all the while I was talking to him, he was getting fainter and fainter until when I more or less finished, he just went out like a light. Cheryl pondered on that for a moment, her expression sliding down the register from sunny to somber. And then I really cried. 